game last night. Obviously, it was a big, massive game. Ireland and versus Italy and under 21, top of the table clash. Sinclair was up against two centre halves, both playing in Serie A for Hellas Verona and the other player from Salentina as well. Caused them an awful lot of problems during the match last night, Sinclair, and especially with first-time deliveries. They couldn't really deal with his physique. When the ball came out wide, first-time crosses into the box, he seemed to cause the Italian defence an awful lot of problems. Is that something you really see about Sinclair in terms of his attributes, those first-time deliveries, if you get that ball in fast and early out from out wide? Yeah, actually, I appreciate the summary. Uh, I will have a look, uh, actually, this afternoon. Uh, I had the, the game prepared. No, I was not able to watch it yesterday. We live very, very late here from the club. Uh, but, yeah, definitely he's a player that has some strengths. And it's my job to make sure that we can we can attack in a way that, as well, his strengths can can shine. So, the important me for, the, for me is, is the important thing is that we have different strikers. So we can use them in different ways. <clears throat> Lyndon has been as well participating with Scotland. We have Charlie um, that has been here this week uh, training at really high level. So mainly understanding that they are the main three players that can play as a striker. And then some others eventually could play in that position as well. It's my job to try to, to find the scenarios where they can really show their, their strengths. But uh, yeah, with things, as I said, we know about his pace, we know about his strength. So it's about us to attack in a way that that all these qualities can can, can shine. I suppose, Marty, an awful lot of clubs and an awful lot of teams love this type of possession-based football. And sometimes when we watch it up close and we watch it on, on TV, it can be quite deceiving and sometimes at certain clubs because it can be very lateral in terms of how it's played across. There could be no directness in the approach. And how important is it when you're playing a possession type football that there is a directness to it as well, that it's not all lateral, it's not all a cross field, it's not coming out and coming back, that there is a bit of a, there's a bit of a punch, there's a bit of a penetration in it. I always say that possession is just a tool. It's not a it's not a goal by itself. So possession without the the aim of of, of creating the goal chances is useless, in my opinion. Um, certainly, eventually, you can use the possession to defend a lead if that's the case. But that's not my way of thinking. So I'm not interested in to reach in seventy percent of possession and not creating a, a a goal chance. I'm interested in using the ball to move the position to create the gaps. And in that sense, sometimes you need to play back to open a gap. Sometimes you need to play in a lateral way, as you said, uh, to to make sure that the opposition shifts and then to create the, the possibility to accelerate the game. What is very important is to find this balance uh, about when is the right moment to accelerate. There is one rule in football that the, the more straight you go, usually unless you finish the action, the more straight it will come back. So then the games are up and down. This is a rule of football everywhere in every country. So if that's the way you want to play it, fine. That will not be our way of playing. Our way of playing will be more about making sure that our transitions in the moment that we lose the ball, we can regain immediately. And you can only do that if you, if you as a team, you travel all together. If in the, as a team, you make sure that you use the ball to reach higher positions in the pitch. And that requires good quality on the passing game. And that requires the aggressivity, the pace on the ball to make sure that if you can reach a goal chance in one pass, why do you spend 10? I suppose, Marty, we're in a world of technology at the moment and people sometimes overemphasize stats and overemphasize figures and say, oh, look, we had 89% possession and the other team only had 40% or we had uh, in terms of we had so many passes completed compared to other things. And that they're, they're all figures at the end of the day. No results start to come from them. But you think maybe football sometimes the people looking on, they look at the stats too much in terms of what they might portray than the actual game itself. Because sometimes, as we all know in football, it could be a team with 15% of the possession and maybe eight or nine stats, and they nick that goal in 89 minutes, and it's, it's the three points at the end of the day that counts. Do you think maybe sometimes there's clubs and officials and management fans, they overlook the whole emphasis of stats sometimes? I have full respect for whatever is the approach to to understand the game, uh, but but I do certainly think that data stats are just a tool. Uh, depending on how you use this tool, can be <clears throat> can be more useful or less useful. Um, for me, the main stat is how many goal chances we create, how many we concede, because we know that over time, <clears throat> if you create thirty chances a game and you concede one, 
one day you will lose eventually too, but over time you're going to win a lot of games. So this is for me the main the, the main stat if you want to look possession. All these it just it just tools as I said. If you have seventy percent of possession but you are not able to break down a defense and you don't create goal chances, possession by itself is not saying so much. Um, there are many many stats. Even the expected goals that a lot of people have a look today for me it's very it, it, it's too easy too simple to analyze a game that just expected goals that by the way depending on the source it can it can change a lot so if it will be that easy just to check expected goals we should have win this game this is not the way it works uh, otherwise everybody could be could be a manager a head coach we need to analyze the quality on those uh, on those stats and these data we need to understand how why things are happening and sometimes those stats can help to understand the game but why things are happening inside the pitch uh, is about understanding of, of the game and Marty final question for me every coach has those subtle little things they like to do in game day uh, in terms of match day in terms of on that day itself in terms of maybe a rival pre pre uh Preparation, maybe it's a thing in terms of meeting, maybe it's a thing about a meal before uh, instructions before. What sort of subtle thing have you brought into QPR that you've maybe changed in terms of match day? That is it something that you've liked during your time as a manager as sort of work for you in terms of maybe the hour or the two before the actual game itself that you have maybe felt that yeah that's worked for me so good so far I'm going to bring this in QPR it could be some little little thing in terms of preparation it could be a little thing in terms of transport meal but what is one little thing that you've brought in in terms of match day in terms of the lead up to the game on the day itself no once again I don't want to compare on what has been done I think that every manager has his own way to do things so what is uh, 100% true is that uh, when I was playing, I hated the long meetings before a game. Um, in my case, I do have a week to work with the guys. So for me, the game day is very much about just the last, the last focus, the last uh, summary, if you want, of the of the game plan. Uh, I like the very short meetings, uh, and before the game, I, I I leave the players by themselves to have the the routines, their concentration. If we need to discuss just some last details, depending on the lineup of the opponent or whatever, it's usually very short instructions. But uh, I think that the play the, the game belongs to the players. So for me, actually, people will be surprised. But the hour before the kickoff is the most boring hour before on the whole week. Okay. And just not so much to do. Yes. Yes, I, I leave the space to the players and my job, my job, it comes from Monday to to before the the, the game. On the game day is, is is up to the players, and that's the way it must be. Then the decisions that I can make in the during the game to adjust things, then it's my time again. I can help them. But the stars will be always the players, and I hope that this will never change. Cheers, Marty. Best of luck at the weekend against Norwich. Thank you so much.